hypersonic means reaching the moon in 16 hours, around the world in 100 minutes, and next street before you can blink your eyes. This is how fast the next generation of American aircraft aim to be. Invisible aircraft shooting invisible hypersonic missiles. A whole new era of invisible wars. While hypersonic speed is a hot topic today, it traces its roots to a cold time in the past, the Cold War. The Cold War was a crazy time in history. At the height of it, the United States and the Soviet Union had enough firepower to destroy half the world. It was therefore a time of great uncertainty. One minute, there was calm, and the next, there was serious chances of the greatest loss of life in history. This uncertainty motivated both the United States and Soviet Union to develop technologies that were never thought possible. One of these technologies is speed. Crazy, blurry speed. It was a time when speed was the answer to it all. How to build an effective reconnaissance aircraft that spies deep into enemy territory without being shot down. Make it fast. How to build a bomber that can deliver their explosive payloads without being shot down by air defense systems? Make it fast. How to build a lethal fighter jet that will win more dogfights than it will lose? Make it even faster. Speed was everything. And so in no time, the world had shifted from slower subsonic aircraft to supersonic aircraft that broke the sound barrier. And then to hypersonic aircraft that made sound look slow by traveling multiple times faster than it. The Cold War era ushered in the hypersonic era. And it was an era that was ultimately dominated by the American Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, officially the fastest manned air-breathing aircraft in history, a record it has held for over three decades. The SR-71 was developed in the 1960s to high-speed, high-altitude surveillance over the Soviet Union, capable of traveling at speeds up to Mach 3.2 and hitting altitudes of over 80,000 feet. The SR-71 was the ultimate machine for this role. Its space bordering altitude made it incredibly difficult to spot. And in the rare event that it is spotted, it is able to outrun everything shot at it easily. It was never shot down. Despite many, many attempts, the Soviet Union countered with high-speed platforms like the MiG-25 Foxbat, introduced in 1970, capable of Mach 2.8, designed to intercept U.S. bombers. It cost approximately $30 million per aircraft. In recent dollars, the Soviets also developed the Tu-144 supersonic transport, reaching Mach 2, though its military applications were limited. Despite these attempts, the Soviets were never able to exceed or even match the hypersonic prowess of the SR-71. The SR-71 was fully retired in 1999 after the Soviet Union collapsed and the world just didn't desperately need an aircraft that fast. But once again, in the 21st century, it does. The world desperately needs speed, hypersonic speed as most powerful nations battle it out for the top speed in the food chain. The United States must retain its crown. Achieving this, as always, comes billions of dollars in funding and aircraft taking shape in massive hangars, all under some not-so-secret, but secret hypersonic black projects. The hypersonic demands are even higher today. While the SR-71 was able to dominate the late 1900s with a Mach 3 point top speed, any hypersonic aircraft today looking for that level of dominance must be capable of traveling at least Mach 5, at least five times faster than the speed of sound. It must be the fastest official air-breathing aircraft in history. That is as difficult as it sounds. But when has difficult ever deterred the United States? All over the country, multiple programs have been launched with the sole aim of achieving this hypersonic program. Some more successful than others, some probably so successful they are already flying. Here are those programs. DARPA Falcon Project. Force application and launch from continental United States. Falcon is a project launched by the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA in 2003 with the aim to develop hypersonic aircraft and weapons for prompt global strike, enabling strikes anywhere on the globe within one to two hours. 
Jointly managed by DARPA and the U.S. Air Force, Falcon had two main components. The first, a small launch system for payloads, and the second, a hypersonic weapon system, which was the vehicle itself, be it the X-41 Common Aero Vehicle or the hypersonic cruise vehicle. Key demonstrators included the hypersonic technology vehicle 2, HTV-2, targeting Mach 20, and the HTV-3X Black Swift, reusable Mach 6 jet. HTV-2 flights in 2010 and 2011 reached Mach 20 but ended prematurely due to thermal damage and control issues. The Black Swift designed for runway takeoff was ultimately canceled in 2008 due to a cease in funding. The project was expensive. Its 2008 budget was $170 million with each HTV-2 launch costing $50 million. However, despite these setbacks with the Falcon project itself, the project greatly advanced aerodynamics and thermal management and influenced other advanced hypersonic efforts like SR-72. The Falcon project officially ended in 2011. Number 4. The NASA X-43 The NASA X-43A Pegasus, part of the HyperX program, was an experimental hypersonic aircraft designed to validate scramjet propulsion from future jets. Launched in the late 1990s, it aimed to demonstrate air-breathing hypersonic flight at speeds of up to Mach 12. The X-43A, a 12-foot-long uncrewed vehicle, was air-launched from a B-52B Stratofortress boosted by a Pegasus rocket to reach test altitudes of 40,000 to 120,000 feet. Its hydrogen-fueled scramjet engine enabled record-breaking flights. Mach 9.6 in November 2004 and Mach 7.5 earlier that year, the fastest air-breathing flights ever. The HyperX program cost $230 million over a decade, from 1996 to 2004. Each X-43A vehicle built by Microcraft cost approximately $5 to $7 million, with three test vehicles constructed. The program also faced some setbacks, including a failed launch in 2001 due to the booster issue, but succeeded in its final two flights. Test occurred at Edwards Air Force Base and over the Pacific Ocean. The program concluded in 2004, but its data on aerodynamics, thermal protection, and scramjet performance continues to inform subsequent hypersonic programs like Hermes Quarter Horse. Number 3. Hermes Quarter Horse the Hermes Quarter Horse is an uncrewed hypersonic aircraft program aimed at achieving Mach 5.5, a range of 4,600 miles, and breaking the SR-71 speed record. Developed by Hermes, an Atlantic-based startup, is used a turbine-based combine cycle, TBCC engine, which combines a jet engine for subsonic and supersonic travel with a more powerful scramjet engine for hypersonic travel. The second quarter horse, known as MK-1, will be powered by GEJ-85, while MK-2 will transition to a Pratt & Whitney F-100 with a pre-cooler. The first quarter horse, known as MK-0, was ground tested in 2023. The final operation, quarter horse, known as MK-3, is expected to go hypersonic in 2026. Hermia secured a $60 million U.S. Air Force contract in 2021, a $100 million in private funding in 2022, and a $23 million Defense Innovation Unit contract in 2023. Each prototype cost approximately 10 to $20 million. MK-1, built in seven months, completed its ground test in January 2025 and will fly at Edwards Air Force Base in 2025. MK-2, targeting Mach 3, is under construction for the summer of 2025. Once completed, Quarter Horse will be used to develop civilian hypersonic aircraft called the Halcyon Airliner to revive the Concorde Airliner in some way. It will also be used to build a military hypersonic aircraft called the Dark Horse Drone. Hypersonic for everyone. Number 2. Project Mayhem Project Mayhem, officially the hypersonic multi-mission ISR and strike program, is a secretive Air Force U.S. initiative to develop an uncrewed hypersonic aircraft capable of Mach 10 speeds for intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and strike missions. Led by the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, it aims to replace the SR-71 Blackbird with a reusable platform using a multi-cycle propulsion system. 
combining jet engines for takeoff and supersonic flight, up to Mach 3, and then scramjets for hypersonic flight. The aircraft will carry modular payloads, including area effect, large unitary or intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance packages, enhancing rapid global strike capabilities. In December 2022, American defense company Lados received a $334 million contract for the project. With an initial $24 million task order for system requirements and conceptual design reviews to be completed by October 2028 at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The program uses model-based engineering to simulate heat and stress at hypersonic speeds. First publicized in 2020, Project Mayhem's development spans over at least half a decade now with potential test flights in the late 2020s. Each unit could reportedly cost around a billion dollars, the apparent price of building the impossible. Now number one, the SR-72 Son of Blackbird. The SR-71 is born again in a new body, a new form, and a new era. The SR-72 Son of Blackbird is a proposed uncrewed hypersonic aircraft developed by Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works in collaboration with DARPA and the U.S. Air Force. Designed as a direct successor to the SR-71 Blackbird by the same manufacturers as the Blackbird. The Son of Blackbird aims to be everything its father was and more. It targets Mach 6 plus speeds for intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, ISR, and strike missions in contested environments. The SR-72 employs a turbine-based combined cycle propulsion system integrating turbojets for takeoff and scramjets for hypersonic flight. With a projected range of over 5,000 miles, its stealthy, high-altitude design aims to evade advanced air defenses every mile of the way. Conceived in the early 2010s, the SR-72 was publicly revealed in 2013. Lockheed Martin reported progress on a demonstrator in 2018, potentially the hypersonic test vehicle 3X from the canceled DARPA Falcon program. Estimated unit costs are $200 million by 2018, with development costs exceeding $1 billion. Aerojet Rocketdyne, contracted in 2016, supports propulsion, leveraging $145 million from DARPA's advanced full-range engine program. The SR-72's timeline remains partially classified. Initial flight tests were projected for the early 2020s, but were later pushed to the late 2020s. Lockheed Martin aims for operational capability by the 2030s, with full deployment possibly in the 2040s. In 2023, Skunk Works confirmed ongoing ground tests with a scaled demonstrator possibly flown in secret. The SR-72's history ties to Cold War-era high-speed platforms and the SR-71. Its mission will be similar, too, to keep the United States ahead of rivals in a heated race a hypersonic race that once again reminds the world of an insatiable need for speed. For the SR-72 and other aircraft like it all around the world, in China, Russia, and so on, and the hypersonic missiles also taking shape. Once all of these aircraft begin to enter service, they will redefine air battle and create a new future, one that can only be dominated by unconventional blurry hypersonic battles. Future Hypersonic Battles Hypersonic aircraft versus hypersonic missiles all guided by floating satellites in orbit, probably armed with laser weapons now under development. These are the type of scenarios air battles of the future can draw up. Scenarios fit for a sci-fi movie and yet somehow they are reality. A not too distant reality too. Many of the hypersonic technologies currently being developed are slated for service in the 2030s and 2040s, which isn't forever away. A whole new world in less than two decades. Hypersonic technologies integration into jets, missiles, and drones will redefine engagement dynamics, prioritizing rapid decision making and precision and high stakes conflicts. They will compress the battle space, drastically reduce reaction windows, make the world smaller, and quite simply, blow our minds. Whichever nation will arrive at the mind-blowing destination first remains a fortune teller's secret, but whichever it is will likely be feared and respected than they are today. Whichever it is would be wielding technologies that are simply unrivaled and could almost qualify as alien as teleportation at least. 
The United States appears to be in the lead today to support one of these nations. Give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.